hello 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 just get my chair sorted out so I have abandoned all other projects because I tidied up my craft room <laughs> and any unfinished project paper craft project I gave away for other people to finish simple as I figured if I hadn't finished it then I would never finish it and I needed something new to stimulate my mind so much as I love paper craft I do like other forms of artistic creation and artistic expression also one of them being miniatures so I'm going to combine the two as I have done before and I'm going to be making a room okay now I have made something similar to this already and um, if you know any of my other channels or know me on Facebook or anything like that then you will have seen my teapot shop and this is going to be kind of a similar idea but not you'll see as we go along so first things first <coughs> I have got three millimeter grey board and this has all been cut according to the covers of the book you'll get that in a minute I've also used cardboard and cardboard it's corrugated cardboard so it's got the wavy bit in between and the only sort of like rule for this is the corrugation has to go this way so that you can bend it this way okay so the lines of corrugation have to be long ways okay so the next thing is as you can see here I have printed out some book spines and the room I'm making so I'm just gonna put this pen away the room I'm making is an idea based around one of my absolute favorite pieces of work which is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven so all of these book spines are Edgar Allan Poe none of them are specifically the Raven because um, it was part of a um, most of the uh, what's the word the publications that um, the Raven is in are compilations of his complete works tales and poems because it's a poem rather than a tale and much as I love like the telltale heart and such things like that the Raven the more I read it, the more I, I feel about it, the more things I notice. And I, I always have a shifting view of what it actually means. Anyway, so the rules are <coughs> when you make your spines, you need to have it so that you can wrap. It's like, so don't cut out the spines. You need them with the extra and you could use real book spines but I think that is such a terrible terrible waste so we do it this way and you choose however wide you want it mine's going to be roughly I think eight and a quarter inches or eight inches uh, by oh excuse me eight, inch, eight inches high roughly and then about five and three sixteenths depth it's not going to be very deep and like I said, that's all due to the covers according to the books that I found. So the other thing you have to take into account is whatever spine you use, you really do, to make it aesthetically pleasing, you need to have a front cover that matches and a back cover that matches. Now you could use um, the uh, volume racks where all the books are the same and just have a plain cover. Or you can do as I've done and choose different books and find whole covers and sort of like mix and match them. So my back cover spine is this here and this is the back cover to this book. Okay, so that's my back cover and this is my front cover and this is the cover for that so that you see this is the depth 
of the book and uh, the room and this is the height of the room so you then have to cut your pieces of card corrugated cardboard to the height and then the width of each spine so the height you just cut it in one long strip so they're all eight inches high and what I have done is chopped them down a little bit if I've needed to some of them are slightly less then the easiest thing for me this is how I do it is I fold around all the edges of the picture of the spine because that way I can turn over and as you can see I, I test print a lot of things and then delete things and reuse the paper which is why it's got all this on the back but then this you can see where it needs to fit into okay right next now this is kind of easy all I'm going to do now this is actually carpet tape it's the sticking down carpet so it's quite strong and it's double-sided tape but I like it because it's thicker and I don't have to worry too much so all I've got to do is not run that down that way oh I really should have thought about this better I'm going to use another double-sided tape because what I want to do is obviously I want to be able to see where I'm sticking it <laughs> so for this one I'm going to use this tape um, the reason why I use tape to stick them down first is because I find um, glue will wrinkle this especially when I put if I want to put glue on the other side as well and it's going to wrinkle anyway but a little bit of wrinkling I don't mind I just don't like a lot <laughs> I've got my glasses on but I'm as blind as a bat lockdown means I haven't been for my eye test so you then put it onto your book spine and then what I like to do is get my pair of scissors because they have this nice rounded edge you could use a um, bone folder if you have a rounded edge I don't know if you can see this is really worn away and then what I like to do is flatten out the corrugation because it makes it easier then to right now if you have see and I think that just makes it look quite realistic if you have a book for instance like this one that has the raised bits you can put a piece of string or air dry clay or something underneath that but just a piece of the strip cut off of like the same width take the strip and stick it underneath but it's a lot of work so it depends how realistic you want them to look they do look quite realistic anyway um, so yes then And you have to do this for every single one you have to chop the edges now when you chop the edges don't go right up to the corner leave yourself a little gap um, some people like to fan it out which is when you do this which is a curve rather than and the only rule is you don't really want it to go too much over so you, you only need it to go each side so let's um yeah you don't want it to overlap okay now your next decision is glue or tape or both this is heat resistant tape it's actually tape for repairing mobile phones and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a couple of bits up 
here. I will use glue as well, I think. do when you've finished wrapping each of these pieces is you want to go around and ink the edges just to make sure it's nice and dark and you don't get any white paper showing through so I think I'm going to go with tops first I'm going to fold that in. I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight over the top of that spine bit there. I take, took that off completely. That's no good, is it? There. <laughs> I'm not having much luck with tape today. Partly, I think, it's because it's so darn hot. <laughs> so. Right, and as, if you've ever seen any of my videos before, you'll know then that the best thing you can do is kind of fold in these edges. So you want to get something like your bone folder, and you just fold those in a bit so that when they fold over it's nice and neat okay so glue I think I'm gonna go with is this one not even been opened See anything for toffee? I don't think this one's been opened. <laughs> Drop my knife. Oh, that's the only trouble with aliens is they're so hard to open. The tops. Okay, so, and I know I'm flapping, but like I said, it's so hot can't concentrate properly but I wanted to get this done I'm so looking forward to starting this project and then I kept on getting distracted mama had to go crush some candies <laughs> that's all I'm saying as you can see it's so hot this glue really isn't uh, sticking very well so a bit of glue will help it on its way. And I didn't specifically pick Aileen's for any particular reason other than that. It was at the front of the drawer and I just picked up this, the glues that were at the front of the drawer, which were these. So I've been told this one's quite good actually. It's from the works. It's, it's very inexpensive. I won't say cheap, cheap sounds nasty, but it's inexpensive. And you have to excuse the noise. Um, my windows are open. I haven't got the fan on because I didn't want that to interfere too much. But um, yeah, so the window's open and of course you can hear all the noise though so it is quite early in the morning so hopefully you don't get too much disturbance so make sure those bottom ends are nicely tucked in and that way it will look neat from the front there we go and then I need something to do and all I like to do is that'll do 
and there you have a nice book spine and as you can see it, it does look not like a real book spine <laughs> it looks real so do that get to sneeze oh dear so do that to all of the book spines and uh, when I've done that <laughs> I'll be back right I've had to delete an awful lot because I am um, my computer decided to go wrong so uh, I just wanted to show you the spines um, I printed out an extra one and put an extra one in because I wanted it to be a certain um, width across so all these together work out at round about um, eight and a quarter inches <coughs> so and I haven't inked the edges yet but that's what um, the front of this room box essentially is going to look like so I can put it on a shelf and it'll just look like books okay the next bit you're going to see is me putting the box together um, I'm just gonna. This is just water, by the way. Um, <coughs> okay. So, and I've lost the <laughs> the piece of film which shows um, all the measurements. So, um, the bottom of the box, the base, is. Um, I do believe eight and a quarter. Let's have a look roughly. It's eight and a quarter by five and one eighth, which means the sides are five and one eighth by eight, and the back that's both. No, the sides are five and a quarter by eight that's both the sides and the back is eight and a half by eight the top which is going to be inset is eight and a quarter by five and one eighth so obviously it's the same as the face. And the door is going to be inset into this gap. And that will be eight and a quarter by seven and three quarters. Yeah. So those are the measurements, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, or what I have done as I put this together first of all I had some very uh, quite thin card it was about 160 to 180 GSM I don't know what that is in pounds um, and I used score tape uh, the, the, the hinges were about an inch and a half wide I folded them in half put score tape on put those on and then I used this um, packaging tape which has got nylon thread running through it for strength and this is as you just saw um, you, you just spray water on and then stick it on or spray water onto this I, I find it easier to spray water onto the surface um, so you're going to see me very quickly as because I'm going to fast forward it quite a bit putting this together and it's only the the bottom the sides and the back it's not the um, the ceiling of the piece the top of the piece and it's not the door so it's just the two sides the back and the bottom
Okay, the next job is the hinges. Now, <coughs> because obviously I want this front to open up. Now, these are the only hinges I could find. I don't know if you'll be able to see the pattern on them. They're ever so pretty. They're decorative hinges. They're, you know, like I said, they're, they're really lovely. Unfortunately, no one's going to see the decorative part of it. And I've got glue everywhere. Um, so, because this grey board is quite thin, I'm using Brad's split pins. Um, what else are they called? Paper, paper fasteners. This is what I'm using to hold the side in, but also glue. Um, so I'm using this glue. <coughs> um, so I put the glue on. Obviously I've measured where it's got to go first. Uh, so the glue goes on and then I put the split pins through open them up at the back so they're open and they have to be this way okay so they have to be vertical not horizontal and then I'm just going to take this over here and I'm going to squash as much as I can because I want these to be as flat as I can possibly make them I mean, they're not going to be very flat but they are going to be a little bit flat and you have to make sure that these can still uh, sit flush down okay next uh, I'm going to just hammer down these bits um, which you really don't want to hear so I'm going to do it off camera Okay, that's done. Now I need a couple of clips. There we go. Just to make sure that they are going to. I think I'm going to go that way on them. I can't see anything in here, it's terrible. I've got my glasses on, not that you'd know it. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to leave that 24 hours to dry because that's how long it takes to dry. And, and so I still haven't put the top on. Um, you can put these on first without uh, measuring where they need to go on the front, but obviously you do want at some point to measure where they go on the front. I'm hoping that'll be okay. There we go. So that's that done. Um, when this is all dry, I'm going to get some super glue. I'm going to open on my windows again and I'm going to run super glue all down that edge and what that will do is soak into the fibres of this and harden it and set it so that it doesn't splay out and hopefully that will make it more durable so I'm going to have to keep on moving these because I put glue on them moving the hinges so there we go that's the hinges and that is about it. So that's the basic box. Like I said, um, and uh, obviously, no, not that one. It's going to be this one. Um, that will go there. You see, and you won't see the. Sadly, you won't see the hinge, and I can't put the hinge on top of here because then um, it won't be. <laughs> Um, it needs to go over a certain amount. Oh. Explain yourself, woman. Um, then the holes on the hinge where it goes onto the front uh, would not be... They'd, they'd be cl too close to the edge or over the edge. So, there we go. 
that's why I haven't put them on top of the pattern that's going over so that's why they're underneath so there we go